Hello, my friend. It's your girl, Jen Loves Reviews. Jen, 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 Jen. It, no. No, it just doesn't work. It's, it, no. Jen, 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 no. But I tried. At least I tried. E for effort. Hello, my friends. It is time to review the Jackie Ina Collab palette with Anastasia Beverly Hills. I'm so excited to share this with you because I do feel like I have some information for you that I think you should know before you purchase this. So if you are interested in learning about that, hang tight, we're getting into it right now. If you've never been to one of my everything you need to know videos before, they are quite long. I do include timestamps down in the video description if you'd like to skip ahead to parts that you are more interested in. We're just gonna go ahead and jump right into what you need to know about this palette. So this was done by Anastasia Beverly Hills in collaboration with Jackie Ina. Those are the shades that she chose. This is available everywhere that Anastasia Beverly Hills is sold, which is a lot of places. I will list those for you in the video description, including Sephora, Ulta, Beautylish, Nordstrom, lots of places. Everything in this palette was made in the United States except for the brush that comes in it. It's the same Anastasia Beverly Hills brush that comes in all of their palettes. The brush is double-sided. There's a flat end and a fluffier end. I personally do not like this brush at all. I never use them. I've tried to use them and I find this side to be very scratchy. This side's a little bit more functional, but I have brushes that I like so much more, so I usually don't use the brush. The shelf life listed on this palette is 18 months, but I tend to keep my powder products a lot longer than the shelf life, that's a you do you moment. But the shelf life listed is 18 months. Anastasia Beverly Hills is a cruelty free brand. They are PETA certified cruelty free. They say that they do not test their products on animals and they do not test any of their ingredients on animals. Brand controversies. Now this is kind of a long section. So if you're not interested in this part, or if you already know all the brand controversies and the Jackie Anna controversies, I will put a timestamp. You can skip ahead, but let's start with Anastasia Beverly Hills. So the first controversy isn't really a controversy. It was just more of a strange launch of the subculture palette. When they released the subculture palette. There was a big backlash about it because the formula was extremely different than anything else Anastasia Beverly Hills had come out with before. So people didn't really know how to use it. The ingredients were very minimal. The formula was very powdery and the shades a lot of people found difficult to work with. So is that a controversy? Not really, it's more of like a notable moment. The closest thing to an actual controversy was an Instagram post that they put up where the black model that was used, it looked like she was wearing a completely different lip shade than the rest of the models shown. And people were like, what's up with that? Anastasia Beverly Hills said that it was a mistake. They accidentally used the wrong picture to go with that set of colors that they used the wrong picture of the wrong shade on that particular model. That's it for ABH. That's all the brand controversies, but Miss Jackie Ina, she has a lot of things going on. Well, I wouldn't say a lot of things. It's just some things that have followed her for a while. So the biggest one people bring up with their issues with Jackie Ina are the issues that she's had with a drama channel called Petty Page. I'm gonna give you the quick down and dirty version. If you want more information, I will link some videos down below. Basically, Page made a video that Jackie didn't like about affiliate links. Jackie copyright struck her and her vi Paige's video was taken down for a short period of time, but it was found that Paige's video was fair use. Her video went back up. Shortly after that, Jackie's email account was hacked. She had thousands of emails coming in. Thank you for joining, you know, so-and-so's mailing list. And she didn't know where these were coming from. She found out very quickly afterward that it was a tactic for someone to hack into her bank account and steal, uh, I think it was $1,500 out of her bank account with a purchase through her bank account. She blamed Paige for it because she knew through the copyright claim that Paige had her name and her email address. There was never any evidence uncovered that Paige had actually done this. So without evidence, Jackie deleted her video. A year later, Jackie is coming out with a shade extension with Too Faced for their Born This Way foundation. On her Instagram story, she puts this statement, apologizing to Paige and her subscribers for making the video saying she never should have posted it. People had a problem with that because of a couple of reasons. First, it was on Instagram stories that disappears within 24 hours. Second, the accusations against Paige were on Jackie's YouTube channel, not her Instagram. So a lot of people felt like she should have posted her apology 
on YouTube and actually cleared pa Paige's name and said, Paige did not hack into my email, Paige did not steal money from my account, and specifically cleared her name in that way instead of a general apology just for not making the video. So there was that. There are a lot of people that still think about that and still have a problem with Jackie because of that. The other big controversy that happened recently was a tweet that she released, and I will put that on the screen right now. People found this to be a bigoted tweet against white people. Uh, people were very upset about this because it was a generalization against white people. Uh, you can think whatever you want to think about it. I'm putting it out there for your information. And this really, I think, uh, strengthened in a lot of people's minds, people's feelings that Jackie had a thing against people who were uh, white. And of course, some people think that that's absolutely ridiculous. It's up to you what you believe. And the last thing I wanted to mention is that there was a situation with Jared Blandino, who is the uh, was the founder of Two Face. Well, is the founder of Two Face, but he sold the company, so now he's kind of just kind of a higher up in the company at this point. He had had a uh, a party, and he took a picture with his husband in front of a cake, and the cake said, uh, "Rich lives matter." There were a lot of people that expected Jackie to say something. About about that publicly to Jared since she does know him, she's worked with Two-Faced, and she did not do this. There were a lot of people that were disappointed in her for not uh, not saying something publicly. Jackie alluded to that, that she may have said something privately, that nobody knows what goes on behind the scenes, uh, and that she, you know, it's possible she said something to him privately, but she did not say something publicly. And with these things, I'm just trying to present the facts to you of what happened, and you have to decide for yourself what you feel about them. Now, there's two things that I am gonna add my personal thoughts on because they do have to do with this palette specifically, and it's two shades that are in here. And when I did my first uh, thoughts on this in a live stream, we talked a little bit about this, and I felt like I needed to bring it up one more time and kind of give you some more uh, of my opinion on this. So there's two shades people are finding controversial in here. One is the shade Wigglies, the other one is Trust Issues. Let's start with Wigglies. So we talked about this in chat. There is a term that was used in the late, you know, in the 1990s. I remember it from like the mid 90s. I definitely haven't heard it since the year 2000. That is uh, the, a combination of the word white and the N word, okay? When you put those together, you get a word. And this is called Wigglies. There are people that are saying that this is a nod to that word and therefore is has a racial implication. If you watch Jackie's video, she says that Wigglies is kind of like legalese. It's wig language. It's it's what you talk about when you're talking about wigs. So Wigglies is just basically legal jargon, but like the wig equivalent of that. So, and it's actually funny because you know when you name a product, whether it's, you know, the name of the product or the shade or whatever, Whatever, you have to like run it by a legal team to make sure it's not trademarked or copywritten or being used somewhere else. The lawyer got back to us and they were like, uh, what exactly is a wigglies? And I was like, you know, the definition of the word legalese, just take that and apply it to wigs. You know, the legalization of something can also be described as the wigglization of something. So there's that, we'll take it. My <sighs> okay, so this is the thing. Okay, the, the W N word word, I don't feel like, in my opinion, is a racial slur against white people because it's not really about white people. <laughs> it's, it's about white people appropriating black culture and what people may be called if they appropriate black culture. I don't think it fits, no matter what you think about Jackie and how she feels about other people, I don't think it fits to put that in here. It just doesn't make sense to me. I don't have enough evidence in my mind that that is what this is about. Jackie wears a lot of wigs. She's a wig person. It makes a lot more sense to me that this shade would be about wigs than it would be about a word that's basically just out of, nobody talks about anymore, no one uses that word anymore. Um, and it just, it's a big stretch for me. It's a big stretch for me. That's my opinion. You feel how you want. I'm not telling you how to feel. You feel how you want. That's how I feel. The other one is the shade Trust Issues and then the fact that Trust Issues is a white shade. People are saying that's a nod to her having trust issues with white people. Again, my opinion is that it's a stretch. I didn't even think about this until the live stream when people were bringing it to my attention. And again, you have a right to feel how you wanna feel. 
in that live stream, I almost giggled a little bit because it just seemed so insane to me. First of all, I don't know a single white person on this planet that's this color. I just want to just say that. Um, the reason why Jackie says this is called trust issues is that it's white in the pan and then when you swatch it, it's yellow. Um, and that's why she has trust issues because duochromes give her trust issues. Next color is trust issues. And do you want to know why I call this trust issues? Because when you swatch Miss Trust Issues, she looks like one color, but she swatches something completely completely different. Do you see that really bright, really limey, zesty green? That's what I wanted. And this is why we have trust issues. Duochromes are the reason why we have trust issues because you buy the color thinking it's one thing and you get something completely different. Now you're scrambling around looking for your receipt. Hmm, should have read the reviews. That makes sense to me. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Like, again, I think it's a stretch. And that's, again, that's me. You have to decide for yourself how you feel. I'm just letting you know so you can make a choice for yourself. So now we're done with the brand controversies. And if you skip that section, welcome back. Let's talk about value. This palette is $45. You do get 0.7 grams of product in each pan. This is gonna make the biggest difference to people who plan on hitting pan on this palette, that plan on going through it. You don't get a ton of shadow in this. I personally like to see at least a gram of product in each pan, because I feel like that lasts a good amount of time. When it starts getting less than that, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, it's kind of like, it's really not a lot of product. So you get 14 pans in here, so it's 9.8 grams total. So that gives us $4.59 per gram of product. And that is quite expensive in the competitive beauty space. So if you look at like, let's say a Too Faced or a Tarte palette or an Urban Decay palette, you're going to get a much better value as far as the price per gram in those palettes than an ABH palette. All right, ingredient analysis time. So on the back of the packaging, it says in very, very fine print, warning, Supreme, Pinker, and Big Wig are not intended for use around the immediate eye area. So my friends, what does that mean? It means we've got some pressed pigments in here, which means that there are some pigments in here that are not FDA approved for eye use. And I looked at the ingredients and yes, we have red six slash seven. We also have red 21. These are the same red pigments that have been used in, let's say the James Charles Morphe palette, the Manny MUA Lunar Beauty palette, Life's a Drag palette, there we go. Uh, the Jeffree Star Blood Sugar Palette, it's been used now in lots and lots and lots of shadows. Some people do have sensitivity to this pigment. These are not FDA approved for eye use, but this is the weird thing. When I looked at the ingredient list, it's not the ones that are listed there completely. The box says specifically, Supreme, Pinker, and Big Wig. But when you look at the ingredient list, it's actually Supreme, Pinker, Edges, and Ginger that have those pigments in them. Weird, right? So for me, I'm looking at this, I see misbranding, which is not a good thing. So. Hello, editing Jen here. Big update to this topic. As I was editing, I realized that this isn't misbranding. What this is, is really strange communication. The screenshot you saw of the ingredients on the screen was from the Anastasia Beverly Hills website of the ingredients. If you look on the box where it says the pressed pigments are Supreme, Pinker, and Bigwig, and you look at the ingredient list from the box that's in that teeny tiny minuscule little print, that actually matches what it says on the box. It just doesn't match what's on the website. And if you look way down at the bottom of the ingredient list, in fine print, it says ingredients are subject to change for the most complete and up-to-date list of ingredients. Refer to the product packaging. So what you're going to need to do if you are sensitive to red pigment is you're going to have to look on your individual box to see which pigments are the ones that are the pressed pigments, the ones with the red dye in them. The second issue that I wanted to talk about is about the part that you are about to watch. I don't think I articulated myself very well. Jackie is about to explain about the pressed pigments in the palette. In my opinion, she does not do a good job of explaining that the pressed pigments are not FDA approved for eye use. My issue is not, absolutely not, that Jackie put these pigments in the palette. It's not that she put them in there. It's that she didn't talk about they're not FDA approved for eye use. So I just wanted to make sure I'm clear that I have no problems with them being in the palette. I just wish that she had talked about it a little bit more because they're not FDA approved and some people could have significant sensitivity to these colors. All right, now that I've rambled on enough, back to the video. 
I don't know what to say about that, but just so you all know. My other issue is always the issue that I have with influencers when they release a pout like this and they're not clear about it. The only person that I feel like has been absolutely clear about this, believe it or not, is Jeffree Star. He's very good at explaining this. Seems like every other influencer that has something like this in their palette just doesn't do a good job explaining it. Let's roll the clip of Jackie explaining this part of her palette. As I mentioned earlier, the palette contains a blend of pressed pigments, foils, and also shimmers. The colors that are pressed pigments, I have my notes here. Supreme is a pressed pigment. <laughs> Supreme is a pressed pigment. Pinker is a pressed pigment. And Big Wig is a pressed pigment. All that basically means is maximum color payoff because it's like the purest concentrated color it can get from MAC, which is really important. Like I said, I have to overcome a whole different set of challenges with shadows. Them not showing up on my skin tone, them being chalky, them being ashy, them being streaky, all of the above. Like some people are like, I can make this look like Anastasia Rose, and I'm like, uh. I don't look like that on me, but okay. So yeah, she doesn't talk about it not being eye safe. She doesn't talk about some people may be sensitive to it. Um, Manny MUA, when he talks about it, he talks about it staining the eyes, which is possible. I don't believe Jackie even did that. Uh, so, so yeah, she didn't do a great job with that. But now you as viewers of this channel, no. Another thing to keep in mind is this is not a vegan palette. There is carmine in this palette. Carmine is made from crushed beetles. The shades that do have carmine are Soleil, Lituation, Credit, Supreme, Pinker, Shookington, Edges, and Ginger. So basically, about half the palette has carmine in it. So if you do not uh, use those kinds of products, some people also have sensitivities to those, uh, to that ingredient, you don't wanna purchase this palette because it's a lot of the palette. The last thing is ultramarines, which are not FDA approved for lip use. So if you're planning on tapping these onto your lips, like I'll show you in a minute in the demo, like I did, uh, you don't want to put Supreme, Pinker, Edges, or Ginger on your lips because they're not FDA approved for lip use. This is a mica based formula and I did look at the ingredients of this compared to all the other ABH palettes. I will link my video down below of the comparison of all the other ABH palettes before this one. I think it's it's pretty much all of them. It might just go up to sultry actually now that I'm thinking about it, but I'll link all my ABH reviews down below. So this is a new formula for ABH slightly. It's the same ingredients. It's just, they, they put them in a different order. Jackie purposely wanted this palette to be for people of deeper skin tones. She wanted, she didn't want it to be ashy. She wanted it to show up. She wanted it to be easy to blend on deeper skin tones. And I believe that's the reason for the formula change. Now it's not a huge departure from their other formulas. It's pretty, I mean, it's using the same ingredients. It's just mixed up a little bit, I guess. The purpose is to help with that ashiness, to help with that pigmentation. So yeah, so that's a thing. Now that I've given you the nitty gritty on this palette, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a demo of how I got this look today. And me going into this, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. All I knew is I wanted to use as many shades for you as possible so that you could see them on the eyes. And this is what I came up with. So if you wanna see how it came together, that's what we're getting into right now.
All right, now you've seen the demo of how the eye look came together. If you're interested in swatches of this palette, I do have finger swatches, brush swatches, and comparison to the other ABH palettes and other palettes in my collection. I will link that video down below. It's It was a lot to put all in one video, so that one is a separate video. Again, link down below. Now it is time for me to take my leave of you. Unfortunately, I got started with this video very late. I put this makeup on about 3.30 p.m., but I can come back in eight hours. I will be back in eight hours, let you know how this wore, and I will also let you know how it wore the other times that I've worn this and kind of compare. Today we used the concealer as uh, for the cut crease, so I haven't done that before, so it'll be interesting to compare how this wears compared to days when I didn't do that. And of course, I'll give you my final thoughts on the palette, who I think it works for, who I don't think it'll work for, and that's coming at you right now. Day is done. Okay, so let's go ahead and check in. It is about 11.30. It's cheating a little bit. It's about 11.15. I gotta be honest. My son's having a sleepover and I have a little bit of a window here. So let's, let's take advantage of that and do quick check-in and final thoughts. So check in first, check it out. All right, so what do we think? I'm dropping things. What do we think? I am seeing, like I usually see, a transfer of the shimmer from my lid onto my brow bone. That has been happening to me for about a year. <laughs> Before, it didn't used to do that, but now it does. If you have any suggestions of how to prevent that from happening with shimmer shadows, let me know. I'm open to trying new things. I do notice that the shade sponsored has faded quite a bit, especially on this side over here. I do still think it looks good. I think that if I was working a long shift or something and I needed my makeup to last all day, I don't think anybody would really notice. I can notice up close. You just kind of have to decide for you. Uh, this is, I think, the fourth or fifth time I've used this palette. I've used it quite a bit, and I haven't really had a big problem with lasting power, uh, but I haven't used Sponsor it a whole lot. Shade is absolutely gorgeous to go on, but lasting power really isn't fantastic. The only shade that I feel like I'm having any kind of difficulty with other than the lasting power on Sponsored for today is the shade Shookington. It's just a very, it's kind of a brittle shade. It's kind of chunky, so you don't want to take your brush and like start going crazy in it or anything. You don't want to take your finger and press in it like crazy because you're just going to get way too much product. And that's kind of a theme for the whole palette, but especially Shookington, just be extra careful with it. If you notice in the demo, I was barely tapping my brush into these products for a reason. They are so soft and so pigmented, you really need to barely tap your brush. If you apply too much, it's gonna be a lot harder to blend out. You wanna start off light, build it up. I've been asked a lot by my lighter skin friends in the community, because this was formulated for women of a deeper skin tone, will it work for women of lighter skin tones? Yes, absolutely it will. Again, you just need to go in with a light hand. I do however really appreciate the fact that ABH collaborated with Jackie in order to create a palette like this that isn't going to have any undertones, any ashiness that's going to look bad on women of color. It was specifically designed that way and I think that that's absolutely fabulous. Also the tweaks to the formula seem to have really worked. I've seen some gorgeous looks on Instagram on women of color and it looks absolutely gorgeous. I do wanna show you very quickly some redesigns that I did of this palette, just to have you look at it in a different way. I don't think Jackie did a bad job of designing the order of these shades in any way, shape, or form. I just think that it's interesting to see them organized in a different way, so you can kind of see the color selection maybe in a different light, I don't know. The way that ABH goes with their shadows is they try to keep shadows together that would look good together. So you can use these as a quad, you can use these as a quad, you can use these as a quad, these as a quad kind of thing. That's kind of the idea behind it. But for me, I kind of like to see things in more of a visually organized way as far as the colors go. So those are just some examples of other ways to look at the exact same shades within the palette. I do feel like ABH has really improved their formula. They're just improving on it more and more and more, uh, starting with like the soft glam and into there. I mean, it's just been incredible. And I'm telling you how fast it was for me to put this on compared to uh, when I had showed you all the Milani palette. This is called Gilded Rouge, by the way, not Gilded Ember. I showed you this in the swatch video and showed you that some of the shades were very, very similar. This this palette is very difficult to work with compared to this one. It took me probably twice as long <laughs> to do a look with this palette as it does with this palette. And even then, 
I don't like the look as much, even though some of the shades are very similar. The only people I think that this would not be good for are people that just don't like brighter colors, don't like bolder looks, uh, because you're really gonna end up having to stick over here in this, you know, I don't know, what, what do you call it, a group of six? Sex something. We're just not gonna go there. <laughs> but we've got all these, you know, the pinks and the purples and things, and I think that might be a waste. If you're looking for something a little more natural, go soft glam, go sultry. This is not gonna be for you. But I do feel like somebody of any skin tone is going to be able to use this. And from what I've heard from the women of color who have commented about this palette, that has been very difficult with ABH shadows as far as the undertones being ashy, and this has not been a problem for them. So that is very, very exciting. So I just wanna say a big congratulations to ABH and Jackie for putting out an amazing eyeshadow palette. I mean, it, it really is very good. That's all I gotta say about that. Before we go, since you've hung in here this long, I do have a giveaway. I am not on ABHPR. Jackie specifically added me on for this launch. So thank you, Jackie, for doing that. That was so, so nice of you. I had already purchased it. So we're gonna go ahead and do a giveaway. In order to enter, all you have to do is make sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel and make sure that you leave a comment down below. If you specifically do not want to be entered, you can always leave that comment, but if you don't say you don't want to be entered, I'm assuming you do want to be entered, just leave a comment down below and you're officially entered. And in one week from today, I will be picking the winner. I will pin the winner's name to the top of this comment section. It will also be in the video description. You will have two days to respond back to me. So make sure that you come back, look at the comment section, look at the video description. I will also be commenting under your comment. So you should get a notification from YouTube, but set a reminder on your phone right now to come back and check and make sure. Because if I don't hear from you within two days, I'm gonna have to pick another winner and that will be super sad. But now you know what time it is. It is your turn in the collective brain of Makeup Awesomeness to sound off and let me know what you think about this eyeshadow palette. What did you think of the review? If you've tried this palette, what do you think about it? Have you been enjoying it? If you have not tried it, do you plan on trying it? Why or why not? Leave all of your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe before you go. Mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.